this practice, right? This practice of abstinence, this practice of retention, celibacy, is like a rocket launcher, you guys. It's like a rocket launcher. I feel like I've been launched into a whole other stratosphere of existence, man. And really, that's just the beginning, though. It's like this practice, when you stick to it, and you really, really commit yourself, and then you start to incorporate other practices, and you start to get really holistic about it, and you start to value yourself very highly. You value your health, your well-being, your energy, and your mentality, and your spiritual connection to divine source. You value those things more highly than you value anything else. I think this is a natural extension of this retention. All right. So, you guys, I can't say enough about this. So many people in this world cannot see. And I say this as somebody who used to be blind in so many different ways, but now I can see. And what blinds us is our ignorance to righteous, natural law. Natural law is a law of righteousness. It's a law of righteous principles that are in accordance with divinity. Divine source, the most high God, is righteous in nature, lawful in nature, loving, merciful, forgiving, but also capable of wrath right? And in the most loving way, the same way that like if a child misbehaves enough, a good parent isn't going to allow that, right? A good parent isn't going to go, oh, great, great little Jimmy, you stole from somebody. Give him a pat on the back. No, they're going to put him in time out. There's going to be some form of punishment. You know what I'm saying? God is like that. And see, so when we misbehave, when we act out of accordance with righteousness, and we receive some consequence in life that we don't like, we don't get to blame God. Quite, quite the contrary, we get to thank God. That's really how this works, you guys. And so many people just don't get it. They just don't know the difference between right and wrong. And these people are very worthy of forgiveness. They don't know, they just don't know, all right? So that's part of what I'm motivated by because finally, after doing things wrong my whole life, I finally figured something out. I finally figured out that there's no drug, there's no woman, there's no amount of money, there's no job, there's no worldly pleasure that compares to the feeling you get when you know you're living in righteous principles. Of course, I don't do it perfect. But the thing is, I try. I try. I strive. And when I fall short, I repent. I say, God, I fell short. I see that I fell short. I see that something in me probably said, don't do this. Yet I did it anyways. And then I experience some form of consequence. This stuff gets really subtle, you guys. As you progress on the spiritual path, this stuff becomes increasingly subtle. For me, it used to be really huge consequences, like getting robbed. Like I even, I, I was in rehab at one point, institutionalized, addicted, being a simp in relationships, being a slave, being in bondage, right? Letting women just crush me letting women lift me up and make me feel like I'm on top of the world and then when they go away, I'm crushed. That is weakness. You guys, if you're a man, men are supposed to be strong. This doesn't necessarily mean physically strong. That's part of it. That's certainly important. But real strength is spiritual. Spiritual strength is the strength that is the foundation of all other strength. Because if you're physically strong, and, I, and take me and my life as a case in point, as somebody who 
has studied physical fitness and training and exercise science. I've been a coach, I've been a trainer, I've been an Olympic weightlifter, a power lifter, I've competed, I've won competitions, okay? But what eventually happened to me was I got seriously injured and I could not do those things for a while. Why? Because I wasn't spiritually strong. I lacked a, a spiritual foundation, right? So if you build a tall structure on something that has a weak foundation, what's gonna happen? It's gonna fall over. That's what happened to me. But I learned. And so I had to go back to square one and I had to rebuild my foundation. I had to rebuild it spiritually, first and foremost, which means abstinence from all form of sin, any form that I can recognize. Of course, I'm human, I'm imperfect, and I'm continually, continually learning as I go. <clears throat> but certain things were very obvious to me. My biggest sins were chasing pleasure, lust, you know, fornication, drugs, alcohol, gluttony, eating too much food, being lazy, escapism, staring at screens too much, just being a dopamine addict in general. Anything that gives me a dopamine fix, whether it's drugs, whether it's sex, whether it's the internet, it doesn't matter. I was driven by this constant desire to experience pleasure and to escape myself. That was the root of all my suffering. And so finally, I had to say, okay, I'm gonna pass on these things and see what happens. I'm gonna pass up on these temporary pleasure systems. That includes the corn on the internet, that includes masturbation, that includes fornication, that includes even getting validation from females. Currently, I'm celibate and any, any female that shows me attention, I walk the other way. Maybe at some point that will change, but right now I'm very committed to this. And it's paying off for me in a big way, you guys. I'm healing from the inside out. I'm growing a foundation, a spiritual foundation. So from that spiritual foundation comes mental health. From that mental health now, I'm able to discern which way to go in life which way is correct. And I'm finding that more and more these days, I just find myself in the right situations with the right people at the right time regularly. It's magnetic. Everything I need and everything I even want because my wants have changed. Part of this process, you guys, is that what I want has changed. I no longer want the same things, right? my wants and my needs are starting to align. See, I only want what I need most of the time. And those things are naturally coming my way. I don't even have to try. All I have to do is be myself, be truthful, live in righteous principles, and stay disciplined. Stay on the path. And when I fall down, I admit it, I accept it, I repent, I get back up and I keep moving forward. It's that simple. The longer you do this, your heart expands, your mind expands, your soul expands, your spiritual power expands. Your semen, you guys, the stuff that comes out of you is so incredibly powerful. And when you retain that energy and you apply discipline and self-control, your spiritual power amplifies. Now, this is why a lot of people that try this can't seem to stay on the path because they're in it for the wrong reasons. To them, it's not truly about growing closer to God. If it is, that's going to make this a little bit easier for you to stay motivated, to stay disciplined. Because your eye, your attention, your focus is in the right place. It's on something that is eternal and unlimited and infinite. If this is about getting women for you, if this is about attracting more money, you're shooting yourself in the foot. It's kind of a paradox. So I'm finding that because this really isn't about any of those things for me, all of those things are actually coming my way naturally. It is just the real deal. And all I'm doing here, you guys, is speaking truth and I'm doing it because I sincerely want to help. I sincerely want to see more of my brothers and sisters finding their own power 
and finding out that I think on a level we all really want the same thing. We just want to be happy. We want to be healthy. We want to be safe. We want to be secure. We want our lives to have meaning and purpose. Well, as soon as you stop paying attention to all the nonsense, the corn, the screens, the celebrities, the movies, the actors, all this, all this nonsense, when you stop giving your attention to that and you start putting that inside of yourself and you start retaining that energy, energy goes where your attention flows. That energy stays here, it stays within you and now you become very powerful. And now you can naturally attract the things in life that you want, that you truly want, not what society said you wanted, not what you were conditioned and programmed to think that you wanted, but what you truly deep down want. See, a lot of people don't even know what they even want because they're so conditioned, because they can't stop consuming, right? You guys, we have to get out of consumption mode and into creation mode. The powers that be, the reason the world is the way it is, is because they've created a society full of consumers. They created consumers. So let's flip the script. Let's create creators. Okay? There's so many more of us than there are of them. So many more. They're terrified. And they should be. (laughs) All right? So let's get it. I love you guys. Peace.